What's up, storytellers? I'm C.R. Rowenson, the Magic Engineer, and it's time to talk about magic. In this video, we're talking all about magic system tropes and archetypes. More specifically, we're going to be digging into what they are, why they can be both good and bad for your magic system and your story, and if you do need to change them, ways you can go about subverting the trope and the archetype to make them unique and your own. You ready? Let's get into it. First things first, what is a trope? It's best to think of these as conceptual figures of speech. They aren't actually idioms or turns of phrase or anything like that, but they are ideas and patterns that occur frequently inside a specific story type, genre, medium, game, or pretty much anything. They can be a particular setup for your story. You know, you have one nation at war with another, you have civil war going on. It can be a common twist for the genre or even a popular character backstory or character archetypes even. It can be literally anything that exists in your story and it's the exact same for our magic systems. The core concept of the magic system might be a common trope. We may even have particular effects or limitations and patterns that people have seen many times before and are familiar things that they can fall back on. That's what a trope is. If you're still struggling with the concept, just think about mashed potatoes and gravy. Where I came from, if you are serving mashed potatoes, people are going to instantly start looking for the gravy. It's expected, it's anticipated, it's what we always see going together when you serve them. If you're giving me turkey and mashed potatoes, there's going to be gravy. That's just assumptions that we make, especially in certain contexts, such as Thanksgiving. There, if you give me mashed potatoes and turkey but no gravy, I will be confused. If you serve the two together, that is a trope. That is a trope of food. And in specific contexts, such as around the holidays, that might even be considered cliche. Now, we're going to get into the differences between tropes and cliches because it's sort of a fine line. Because honestly, I don't know anybody that would really complain about having mashed potatoes and gravy. And that's really where the big difference comes in. If we wanted to change things up and subvert the trope of mashed potatoes and gravy, we could change the context that it is delivered in, or even what it is paired with. If you just did mashed potatoes but no gravy, or gravy and no mashed potatoes, that would be a small subversion. Or even if you changed a little bit of the details of what went into it. So for example, if I said I was serving you mashed potatoes and you got them and they were green because I cooked them with green lentils, which is delicious by the way, you would be a little surprised because I broke the trope. And that's exactly what we want to do on purpose, only when we need to, because tropes aren't always bad. But how exactly do tropes apply to our magic systems? Like I said, it's pretty much the same as how it works with our stories. Anything in our magic system can have a trope in it. Your core concept may actually focus on or pivot around a cluster of tropes, which is what I call a magic system archetype. We're talking things like necromancy, elemental magic, divine magic, alchemy. All of those come with a broad set of assumptions and tonal tropes and all different kinds of things that we expect to be there. And this can be true for specific limitations, as I mentioned, where in a lot of magic systems, once people run out of energy, they can't do magic anymore, but the energy will come back naturally. That's a mana pool, and that is a classic trope in magic systems, specifically inside games. And there's way more than that. I mean, even just the idea that magic and armor can't really go together so that you can't have a heavily armored mage is a standard trope. The concept of objects made purely from magic and anti-magic abilities and things that create a shell of interference, all of those are tropes. And tropes can integrate themselves and embed themselves in every nook and cranny of our magic systems and our stories. But again, that's not necessarily a bad thing. Yes, if done poorly, tropes can disrupt the experience and the structure of your magic system 
and your story. If they do disrupt your audience's experience, the tension, how they're paying attention, or their logic, that's where we shift from it being a trope into it being more of a cliche. It is the most obvious solution and the most obvious answer, so it's disappointing or frustrating or, like I said, just disruptive to the experience you were having. At their core, tropes are simply patterns. Patterns that your audience has seen before and therefore can recognize and anticipate. And this is actually what makes them a wonderful tool for you to manage and manipulate some of the experience of your audience. So anytime you're building a story or working on your magic system, if you stumble on a trope or you see one that you've put in there and you didn't necessarily mean to, don't panic. You might not need to change anything. So before you get about, get in there fiddling with the guts and the innards, stop and think about it for a second. I feel there's a lot of pressure that creatives put on themselves to make everything that they create unique and new and inspiring and amazing, and that's simply not necessary. Sometimes you want those familiar patterns. And in fact, if you find a trope and you play it straight, that can be an incredible tool to accelerate your audience's understanding of what's going on in a given situation, which in the case of magic systems can actually be a really, really big benefit to you, the storyteller. Depending on what you're doing, the magic system isn't going to be the most important thing that's going on. So having these little tools and cheat codes so that you can bring your audience up to speed faster can be an amazing thing. It lets you get into the guts of the story and the character without having to spend pages and pages or minutes and minutes of your screen time to communicate the fundamental concepts behind your system. Even if you decide that you don't like that trope in your magic system, that doesn't mean it needs to be removed entirely. Tropes can be subverted and parodied or exaggerated and tweaked and twisted in all different kinds of ways to both direct, control, and delight your audience. So don't throw out this tool just because it's been seen before. Now I know that was a lot of time spent just explaining what tropes are and why you might actually want to keep them, but it's a really important question. If you do decide that you want to change it, there's a really simple way to do that. Before we get into that though, please do take a moment and like and subscribe to this channel if you're enjoying this video. I love producing this content and that just helps more people find it. Now, on to the three steps to change and twist your tropes. Step one, identify the trope. Before you change anything, you need to understand what this trope is. Now, if you're very familiar with the tropes and you know the name, you can likely just go to TV Tropes and search for it there. And they have articles on hundreds, if not thousands of different tropes, how they appear, how they can be subverted, and a whole bunch of examples of how they've been used, subverted, parodied, and all that kind of stuff across anime, movies, books, games, and so on. So if you have never been to TV Tropes, you're welcome, and I'm sorry because you are likely about to lose several days of your life. It's fun though. If you don't have a specific name or title for your trope, that's okay too. The important thing is the understanding. So spend some time, dig into analyzing what your automatic reactions are and your automatic assumptions are based on what you've put on the page. That's gonna tell you so much about what the trope is. And once you have that, that's when you can really move forward. An example of a trope that you can find on TV tropes is anti-magic. And that's just the concept of a person, object, spell, place, ritual, or something that d disrupts and completely negates magic within a certain area around it. Step two, decide if you need to change it. We already dug into this a lot in the first part, so just take a look at it, ask yourself some of those questions we talked about, and see if you can play it straight. If you can play it straight and it works and it doesn't disrupt your story, that's all you need to do. Step three, change it. 
Once you know what the trope is and how it's supposed to play out, that's when you can get into the guts and start twisting things around. Just look at the anti-magic trope, for example. We could change that any number of ways. For one, we could change it so that it doesn't actually negate all magic, only beneficial buffs. Because that would create an interesting scenario where an assassin might want to use an anti-magic object to prevent their target from implementing any kind of magical defenses. Or we could go another route and say that the anti-magic works and it does negate the magic, but it also forces some rather hostile or nasty effects both on the user and anybody else who is influenced by it. Another way that we could do this is maybe, maybe it doesn't negate the magic at all. Maybe it inverts it entirely and reverses the effect of every single spell that is cast. That would really mess with some people. It's all about understanding the expectations that you have set in your story and in your magic system, and or even the ones that you have hinted at, and then sidestepping them, twisting them, changing them, and turning them into something new. Now, I feel this has been an awful lot of setup for fairly minimal explanation, and I'm really not happy with that. If you want to know more than you could ever possibly hope to learn or use about tropes, please do check out TV Tropes. They have some fantastic articles about what tropes are and the different ways that they can be subverted without getting into any specific examples. So that is an amazing resource for you to follow. Additionally, this video doesn't give you everything that I want you to have. And this is actually gonna be the start of a series where I'm going to take different archetypes and different magic system tropes and try and show you ways that we can turn them on their head and make them fresh again. These videos are mostly gonna focus on the magic system archetypes, which carry a large number of tropes with them. Like I mentioned, there's necromancy, elemental magic, superheroes. That's the kind of stuff that I'm really gonna dig into in this series, and I'm really excited to get into it because it's fun to play around with the innards of these magic systems and turn them into my own unholy abominations. <laughs> but in the meantime, before those videos start coming out, if there is a trope or a magic system archetype that you would like me to explore, let me know in the comments below and I will definitely add it into the queue, and I'm really excited to dig into all of these, and I hope you are too. If you have any specific questions for me, don't hesitate to reach out to me. You can contact me through my website, which is just crrowinson.com, or if you wanna hear from me more regularly, talking about magic systems, mental health, and all that kind of stuff, please sign up for my newsletter. I would love to have you there, and I would love to hear from you. But until next time, Keep telling those stories and stay awesome.